there YouTube, this is Tiakasun and welcome to episode one of my brand new series. In this series we're going to be counting off the top three contestants in each category. So for this very first episode we're going to be talking about algae eaters. Now algae eaters are a very common uh, discussion in the planet tank and fish tanks in general. The best thing for algae in any aquarium is balance. You want to keep up to date with your water changes to keep nitrates down, phosphates down. Any sort of imbalance in the system can lead to an algae bloom. Another very handy thing to combat algae or something like a mag float. It's magnetized so you can just move around on the outside of the aquarium and clean up any algae on the glass. You also have scrubbers that you can just scrub from the, from the top. There's a lot of different options. Another good thing is a $1 razor blade from any home improvement store. The razor blade will do wonders on glass. Be a little bit careful with using it on acrylic because acrylic scratches much more easily than glass. So just be warned. A lot of times you want to have just that little extra control and a little bit fle more flexibility with, your, with the algae in your system. So that's when you can add in uh, a form of a cleanup crew or algae eater. Now let's talk about my three favorite algae. For number three on the list, we have the Autosynclus catfish. These little guys get to about an inch, inch and a half in size, and are generally very shy. So it's recommended to keep them in groups. Autocats are great diatom eaters. Diatoms are those that brown dust algae you find in the tank. I have a little bit in my 55 gallon tank, but really the autocats are so small and a bit fragile. So they really would not do well in an Mbuna setup. They would do great in a small South American community, like with Epistogramma, uh, Rams, uh, in, a, in a very densely planted tank. It would just look absolutely stunning. An armada of autocats will very quickly clean up a system. Once the system is all clean, you'll want to supplement their diet with blanched veggies. I highly recommend zucchini. Zucchini is very nutritious and of course tastes good. Now one thing about auto cats is they are generally wild caught. So if you go down to your local fish store I highly recommend asking how long they've had the auto cats in their system. When they are brought in from the wild a lot of times the local fish stores, the importers, everyone really doesn't have the necessary establishment to to keep these guys healthy or well fed. Usually after about two or three weeks though in the local fish store system, all those weaker ones have, have passed away or been removed from the system and you're just left with the hardy ones that are, that are doing well and will do well in your, your aquarium. For number two on the list, we have the Ancestrus or also more commonly known as the Bristlenose Pleco. Now the reason it's called the Bristlenose Pleco is the males have bristles. What a concept. So the males have these bristles or whiskers coming off of them. The females have either smaller bristles, very small bristles, or kind of a smooth look to their face. Now these guys get to about four inches in size, and I recommend if you want to keep at least a single specimen, maybe 20, 29 gallon tank would be suitable. If you want to keep a group of them, I recommend trying to uh, keep a ratio of one male to every three females, and maybe a, a tank size of 40 plus gallons. These guys will do great in a South American community tank, although care should be taken when keeping them with larger cichlids. Oscars, Veste, um, Umbies, those might not necessarily be the best combination for them. Now these guys come in a variety of colors. Just to name a few, we've got albino, albino with blue eyes, it's a very interesting combination. Calico. Lemon Drop, and even Green Dragon. Green Dragons are absolutely stunning. I know Rachel over at Invertebrates by Mrs. Jinx has a bunch of them in stock, so if you want to look to pick some of them up, check her out there. Now just like the Auto Cats, once the algae is all cleaned up in the tank, it's probably a good idea to supplement their diet with blanched veggies like zucchini. Now before we get to the number one algae eater, let's go over a few honorable mentions. First. We have the Siamese algae eater. These guys are a little bit larger and suitable for larger setups. Uh, the reason they did not make this list though is because they tend to be a little bit more fragile and 
are only really suitable for larger setups. We also have the Amano Shrimp. These guys are great for nano setups, but I don't think they're quite the workhouse required to become a full-fledged top three algae eater. Finally, we have the Twig Catfish. I don't have any personal experience with these guys myself. I'd love to get my hands on some of them. Uh, from what, what I've read, they tend to be a little bit more fragile though, but do a very good job of taking out even some bushy algae. Now for the number one algae eater, I've selected a creature that I don't think gets as much respect as it deserves in the hobby. And the reason I say creature is it's not a fish. What it is, is the Nerite Snail. Now these guys come in a variety of colors, they stay pretty small and are great for just about any size tank. Now unlike the ram's horn snails, the Nerite does not breed in fresh water. That means you start off with one, you're going to end with one. Now the one downside of them is the females do leave some unsightly looking egg sacs sometimes around the tank, but that can be easily cleaned up. Now the reason these guys are number one on my list is they will eat just about any type of algae out there. They're also great at cleaning up any sort of food or debris that falls to the bottom of the tank. They are absolute workhorses and will get the job done. They come in a variety of colors, anything like zebra, tiger, spotted, green. I mean, just name a color and there's probably a variation of Nerite Snail for you. So there you have it. Those are my top three algae eaters in the freshwater aquarium hobby. Please let me know what you think in the comments. What would be your top three list for algae eaters? If you want to recommend future episodes for this top three series, please leave them down in the comments below. Thank you very much for watching and fish off.